Good morning. I'm David Kuhn. I'm a regional extension agent with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. And as part of our Grow More, Give More series, today we're going to talk about raised bed gardening. What is raised bed gardening? Well, simply uh, is a form of gardening in which the soil is formed in a three to four foot bed, which can vary in length or shape. The soil is raised above the surrounding soil, approximately six inches to waist high, sometimes enclosed by a frame, generally made of wood, rock, or concrete blocks. Uh, and we're going to enrich that uh, soil with compost. And, and generally, while, while we're doing a raised bed, so we're trying to change the soil makeup uh, so that it drains better and it's a uh, better growing media for what we're trying to grow or simply uh, use the space we have better. Again, it maximizes the available space. It's a convenient option in areas with limited space or areas with poor or rocky soil or sloped terrains. We can take up an area that's a drainage problem and create some raised beds and make it an attractive part of our landscape. Uh, being able to use it all, all while preventing that erosion problem. Uh, it uses high quality soil mixes with large amounts of organic matter, something lacking in our normal soils, uh, and may increase yields. Some other advantages, soil above ground tends to drain better and warms up faster in the spring and it allows for a little faster seed germination and transplant growth. Higher soil levels and improved soil quality uh, equal better access and less maintenance much easier to harvest. Uh, we can grow a little bit more in it because we can plant it a little, a little denser uh, and result in a little higher production per square foot. We can also have a little better control over weed seed germination. It can be entered and maintained soon after a rain uh, or irrigation without compacting the soil because we're not walking on it. It doesn't have to be all the way drained. Uh, and, and once it's rained, we can immediately get back out there and work in it because, again, we're just simply reaching into the bed. We're not uh, walking around in the bed. And that can be an, an attractive uh, addition to your landscape, something to be proud of and that uh, uh, can be a focal point in your life. Some disadvantages. Raised beds do tend to dry out a little more quickly in the hot summer months. Uh, as we talk dimensions, uh, if you're growing throughout the summer months, I would make my bed a little deeper than the, if I'm just growing a spring or a fall garden. Uh, frame and soil can be a little expensive and hard, hard uh, labor intensive to create. Uh, limited crop rotation uh, means we're growing some of the same crops in the same areas, so we can increase uh, disease pressure at times. So sanitation is important as we go through uh, our raised beds. Uh, in, in, increased plant density also means we're creating a little bit of a smorgasbord sometimes for our uh, insect pressure. Uh, it's all in one place uh, and, and can lead to uh, insects congregating or disease uh, uh, starting faster. And it's not well suited for some of our sprawler, sp larger sprawling vegetables like watermelons and, and sweet potatoes. Dimensions, height, usually a minimum of 8 to 12 inches is needed for proper root development. And again, if we're growing summer vegetables, I would make sure I grow, <clears throat> I create my bed a little deeper uh, on the 12-inch side. And if we're just doing fall and spring uh, gardens, the 6 to 8 inches is perfectly fine. Width, four feet is about ideal. What we're trying to do is create something we can reach at least halfway across so we don't have to enter that raised bed to do maintenance planning or, or anything else in our garden. And length can be as long or as short as you want it. Four feet to 12 feet, any, anywhere in there uh, works fine. So when we're constructing a, a raised bed, we simply need a couple of things, a frame to hold the soil and a growing media. Pretty pretty see is... Uh, um, elaborate as you'd like or simply uh, without a frame we're creating a raised area or mounding a bed that we're going to plant in. Uh, pressure treated lumber and planks we always get questions about safety of pressure treated lumber and today's pressure treated lumber is perfectly fine uh, to grow vegetables in. The uh, older uh, pressure treated lumber from 30 or 40 years ago had arsenic in it so we don't want to use that if you have any old pressure treated wood but today's pressure treated wood new pressure treated wood is fine to use for your raised beds 
Lots of different options, landscape timbers, rocks, railroad ties, stone, old tires, retaining wall block, uh, any, anything that's creative that you want to use is perfectly fine. As we get more elaborate, the cost increases. So uh, pressure treated planks, you can get the frame material for about $25 to $38, depending on the size. You can go all the way up to $300 if you're using uh, block or, or, or stone type walls. Growing media topsoil is best. Uh, yeah. and, and we need to make sure we amend that topsoil for putting them in there. Try to stay away from using the native soil that's part of the reason we're putting a bed in most times is to, to change the soil makeup to make it better for growing. Uh, we're going to add some soil conditioner, some fine par, pine bark mulch or something to it, some compost or humus. Uh, mushroom compost works wonderfully. Uh, add some peat moss in is, is fine. Make sure you moisten that peat moss before you incorporate it into the soil. It has a hard time getting wet if you put it in there extremely dry. Uh, composted manures are fine. Uh, be, be cautious on putting too much in and also be cautious about what you're bringing in with that composted manures. You know, animals eat seeds and they tend to come out uh, in the waste. So if you're concerned about some of your composted manures, uh, you can simply put some of those in a planting flat, water them, set them out in the sun and wait a week or two and see what they germinate. Pre-packed mixes are fine and typically are uh, a neutral pH when you get them. Uh, but they are a little more expensive. Uh, as we talk about expense, soil media expenses, uh, you know, simple bulk topsoil runs about 75 cents a, a cubic foot, all the way up to peat moss at uh, $5 uh, a bag. So uh, again, you can be as, as frugal or as uh, elaborate as you want in your growing material, uh, but we're just trying to create a good, uh, rich growing medium when we install that bed. Total expenses, you can go anywhere from $270 all the way up to $500 just depending on uh, what you choose to add to your bed. Installation, typically we would like to rough up the ground with a shovel or a tiller up under that bed to ensure proper drainage. Don't add plastic or other barriers on the ground to serve as a bottom of the frame. A lot of times we create a bathtub effect that holds too much moisture and we have some root rot problems if we do that. Place or build the frame on the selected site. Uh, level the frame. Uh, large wood screws are recommended over nails. And another trick, uh, when you buy, if you're using lumber, uh, buy your lumber right before you're gonna construct your bed. If you buy that treated lumber uh, a month or two ahead and let it sit out in the sun and it dries, it becomes much harder and much more difficult to get those screws through. Through. So wait till right before you're going to buy that bed. It tends to be a little greener, a little softer, and easier to build. You want to add your new growing media to complete the frame. Mix in additional amendments as needed. Uh, again, adding native soil is, is usually not recommended because it duplicates some of the problems we're trying to get rid of uh, at that site. Poor soil drainage or, or nematode or soil diseases. And it kind of defeats the purpose of building a raised bed. When we're adding our soil, we want to add in about a half a cup of dolometric, dolometric limestone per cubic foot of growing media. And what we're trying to do is just raise the pH. Generally, most of our soils here in the south are, are acidic because of the amount of rain we have. Um, so adding a, a half cup per cubic foot helps us... Uh, uh, combat that when we're building our beds. And it's much easier to change that soil pH as we're adding the soil instead of from the top putting it on after. So we're going to add it and mix it in good with the with the soil. Planting techniques, a lot of different options for those raised beds. A typical 4x4 bed uh, with 12 inch spacings and you can plant 16 uh, potatoes or 16 larger vegetables like squash or tomatoes use a little more space so you you uh, as you get a larger uh, vegetable, you reduce the number that can be planted in that bed. <clears throat> and conversely, when you go smaller, you get more uh, in that bed. And it doesn't have to be uh, all the, you can change those around so you have two tomatoes, a couple of squash, uh, and, and some smaller vegetables in there also. 
thank you for being with us today. And as always, if you have further questions, you can call the Horticulture and Home Grounds Master Gardener Helpline at 877-252-4769. Happy gardening.